have apples to roast and grinded the food processor to make applesauce. I'm not peeling them first. I'm just kind of cutting away from cutting them away from the core, and then that, and then we'll roast them with peel, what, what peel is on them, and we'll let that be part of the texture as we grind them up to make plain applesauce. Hi, I'm Kim Weber with the Gimpy Gourmet. We're making granola today. This is about four. It's really actually about three and a half because I ate a half. But this is about three and a half. It's kind of small apples. And we've roasted them in the oven. We're supposed to have maybe a half a cup to add to this um, granola recipe. But I cut the sugar down a little bit. And so we're going a little more on this. So we can have natural sugars and not added sugars. So I'm going to put these into... This is from my KitchenAid hand mixer. Maybe it's a hand, it's got an immersion blender, a whisk, all kinds of goodies. We'll do a demo on that one of these days. But anyway, here is the little food processor blade in operation. So let's let's get that kind of whirred down. Okay, we're going to scrape this down a little bit. And this is pretty much to what I want it to be. It's um, kind of like chunky applesauce. But, and we're going to probably have between three quarters of a cup and a cup. And that's fine. We can add that into our granola, no problem. These are old-fashioned rolled oats. They're not ready-to-cook oats or anything like that. These are old, this is just old-fashioned oats. In this bowl, I've got brown sugar, half, about a quarter cup, about a teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon and a half of cinnamon. I, you could make that a teaspoon of cinnamon and half a teaspoon of ginger or pumpkin spice or whatever, but since this is going to be apples and walnuts, I thought cinnamon would be nice. I have a mixture of chopped walnuts and some pumpkin seeds that measure up to a cup. We've got a cup of raisins. And these are organic Thompson raisins. Then we've got a quarter cup of maple syrup, real maple syrup, and a quarter cup of honey. And I, in the last batch we made, I kind of cut those a little bit, but I just wanted more, so we're going back to the original recipe for that. Then we've got probably between three quarters of a cup you can get it a little, if you, if you measure from your ready-made um, applesauce, you can get exactly half a cup. But since we are cut the sugars, I want to go a little heavy. And the, with the last batch was fabulous with it that way, so I thought, why not? So this is one quarter cup of brown sugar, teaspoon and a half of cinnamon, and some salt. And the secret is to, each time you make an addition like this, like we're adding dry ingredients in the dry, stir it and get it really loving each other because if you don't do that, you'll end up getting a bowl of granola where you've got a big clump of brown sugar or a big bite of cinnamon, or you'll get a bowl where you don't have any nuts. So, you know, it's not fun. So it, this brown sugar, when there's moisture in the air like there is right now, you can cut it out and sit, you know, put it out in a, set it in a bowl, and it will clump up on you. So that's one of the reasons I'm saying stir, stir, stir this stuff because if this stuff can hang together, it will. And you want to just give these as much attention as anything else that you make. So, you know, I would do that. 
So let me get this stirred in here and incorporated, and I'll show you what that looks like when I get back. This is what it looks like if you get them all the little pieces of brown sugar incorporated with your rolled oats. So the next thing you want to add are the nuts. And what I use is a mixture of raw pumpkin seeds and raw walnuts. The reason you want to use raw, you're going to cook this for about 30 minutes. And if these things were already roasted and toasted, they'd be burnt. So, and you don't want salt on them because you're going to be adding salt to this. So, now I have put salted peanuts in some before and it tasted delicious. So, it's, I'm not saying you can't. <laughs> you know, it's just probably best not to. So, let's start making us a little stack of bowls here. Okay, the next thing you add in is the fruit. And what I'm using today is raisins, and they're just organic Thompson raisins. They're a little small, so I didn't have to cut them into bites. If you wanted to add like apricots or something like that, you could. You just need to call, cut them to be about the size of a raisin. If you wanted to add, I've used dates before, cut them into really small pieces, and they were great. Um, Craisins work great. Really, any dried fruit, fruit would work in this instance. The next thing you want to add, and this is a, a good addition, is a two tablespoons of oil. Any kind of oil. It can be anything. I'm using walnut oil. I have plenty. <laughs> I'm trying to not have plenty. And one of the things you want to do, if you do have an oil that you've had for a while, go ahead and give it a smell and make sure it still smells fresh and everything to you because oils can go rancid. And you want to make sure that you've got a good fresh oil in here. And this walnut oil is, is good, but it's just, I'll, I'll, they don't have preservatives or anything like that in them. So I just always want to check. Then we're going to add a quarter cup maple syrup and a quarter cup of honey. And here's the thing. I, because I knew I was going to be pouring, letting this sit a little bit while the other things got ready, I wanted to make sure that I could get as much of this sticky stuff out as I could. And what I did was I sprayed the inside of this glass mixing cup with coconut oil. And it is coming out really nice. Um, what, what I would suggest you do, anytime you have anything that might stick, go ahead and give it a spray with, you know, some cooking spray or some Pam or um, like I did with some spray coconut oil. And then that'll make this come out a lot easier and all that. And what I'm going to do next is add that homemade roasted applesauce that we made. And it's about three quarters of a cup, between three quarters and a whole cup, which is a little more than the recipe calls for. But like I said, I've cut the sugars in half and so I could put a little more of this in. And what this will do, this helps your granola to make clumps. And it, it was really delicious. You know, it's really a delicious addition. But you, can, you don't have to do applesauce. You can do any pureed fruit. So if you got peach tree or something like that, just make a puree. And I'm gonna get this all stirred together and show you what it looks like when we put it on a pan. We're gonna put this in the oven and bake it off for 10 minutes at a time till it equals 30 minutes and we're gonna make sure that it's done. Um, this is the parchment paper that we did the apples on a little earlier today. And I'm gonna go ahead and use it again because you can reuse parchment paper until it falls apart. So, you know, don't just think you can only bake one tray of cookies on your parchment paper, but until it turns like brown, 
<laughs> you know, so you've baked it, and it, it, you'll know, you'll know. But you know, I'm going to go ahead and use this that we made our applesauce on today, and reuse it because that'll save you a penny here and there. And I use parchment paper for a lot of the things because it keeps me from having to clean, clean, clean. And I don't like that clean, clean, cleaning. So, so I'm gonna turn that up right there and get to smashing this into place. Okay, you wanna make sure, push all that into here, that you spread it as evenly as you can, and you want to make sure that you press it down as much as you can because that's how you begin making the clumps of granola. And sometimes you can't get it real clumpy. That's, you know, sometimes it's just the way it happens, but sometimes you can get some really good clumps out of it. So give it a chance by mashing it down evenly and making sure that it's well on the plate. Okay, so let's take this over to the oven. The temperature is preheated to 325. Now the granola is out of the oven. We've let it cool for a while. So what I'm gonna do now is move, move these into a canister. And what I did was I just put a canning funnel here that I, I used during when we were canning tomatoes and all that. But put the canning funnel there and it's got a big wide mouth and it'll, it'll work a little bit better. So we're gonna try this with a little spoon. And what I do is I'll just go ahead and empty everything into this canister. This canister is part of an OXO Good Grips canister set. There's, I don't know, 16 pieces or something like that. And I think we're still using most of them. I think I've managed to, as usual, break something that's unbreakable, but these are Good Grips, is a, Oxo Good Grips is a great company and we use a lot of stuff by them. So I'm gonna keep doing this and I'll talk to you when I get through with it. We've taken the granola off of the parchment and transferred it to the canister here. This is good, I don't know, I just gotta correct this for you. I don't know, it might be better for longer than a week. We just have never had any less longer than a week. A, a serving size is about a quarter of a cup. This is pretty dense. And it's actually kind of nutrient dense if you think about it. It's, it's some grains, but you've got fruit and you've got nuts. And we tried to use the, the walnuts because they have good omega-3s in it. So this would be a good, really good thing for you to keep around. Kids love it. Um, I love it. It's, it's a good, 
good cereal. And if you, you know, don't eat it like, you know, a big batch of popcorn, you'll be in good shape. We hope you enjoyed the time you spent with us today here at the Gimpy Gourmet. Be sure to like this video if you did. Subscribe. And remember, as Warren Zevon said, enjoy every sandwich. All about I am told it comes back to you many folds. Just be true, and all that sweet stuff comes back to you. Be the apple of somebody's eye. Be that honey pie.